Nearly a decade in the making with many hurdles, Dream Chaser, the dream spacecraft of half a century, is finally scheduled to lift off for the first time in the third quarter of 2023, and the first manned mission is set up for 2026. Like Starship, this is considered one of the most anticipated flights this year, especially for NASA engineers. Let's find out everything in today's episode of Alpha Tech. To understand Dream Chaser's prospects, let's talk about the origin. The Dream Chaser spacecraft design is directly based on the HL-20 vehicle. That's a concept developed by NASA, LARC, and studied extensively in the 1980s and 1990s. At the beginning of NASA's manned spaceflight program, lifting bodies were identified as promising re-entry vehicle configuration. Several different prototypes were built and flight tested in the 1960s at what is now the DFRC, including the HL-10 built by Northrop for NASA LARC. Characteristic of LARC designs, the HL-10 had a flat bottom and three fins. By contrast, NASA Ames Research Center designs typically had a rounded bottom and two fins. The HL-10 flew 37 times between 1966 and 1970, and still holds the record for the highest, 90,803 feet, and fastest Mach 1.861 manned lifting body. It was often rated by the pilots as the best flying lifting body and was used to help establish the precision unpowered landing techniques that were used in the space shuttle program. The U.S. manned lifting body program ended in 1975, but a similar program was under development at the Mykoyan Design Bureau in the Soviet Union. Known as the Spiral Project, a single-seat lifting body concept was proposed for a variety of missions, including reconnaissance and a potential space fighter. It's possible this project was influenced by the unclassified HL-10 reports from NASA, as Spiral was also a flat-bottom three-fin design. The Spiral program was never approved for full-scale development, but a number of test vehicles were constructed and flown, including full-scale piloted tests with test vehicles BOR-1, BOR-2, and BOR-3. From 1986 to 1988, NASA LARC took what they had learned from the BOR-4 reverse engineering efforts, and they combined that with their in-house experience with vehicles like the HL-10, and they developed the HL-20 design. Then from 1988 to 1990, the HL-20 was further refined and studied for application to NASA's Personal Launch System, or PLS, program, with extensive wind tunnel and aero heating testing. By 1995, when HL-20 development was suspended, more than 1,200 wind tunnel tests had been performed from Mach 0.05 to Mach 20.3, along with trajectory studies, pilot-in-the-loop handling evaluations in simulators, abort landing simulation flights, and a modified T-38, ergonomics and egress studies with the full-scale mock-up, and two detailed studies of HL-20 fabrication and operations. In 2005, SpaceDev Incorporated, which is now a part of the SNC Space Systems Group, began developing a concept for commercial human spaceflight called the Dream Chaser. For the Dream Chaser, SNC has updated the latest LARC HL-20 design with modern composite materials and construction techniques, drawing on its own experience and the methods developed in NASA's Composite Crew Module program. SNC added a significant onboard propulsion capability using SNC's proprietary hybrid rocket motor technology that was proven in the Ansari X Prize, winning Spaceship One built by Scaled Composites. The HL-20 slab fins have been modified with an airfoil cross-section in accordance with LARC's recommendation to improve handling qualities during approach and landing. The new NASA docking system is baseline for the aft hatch to enable docking with the ISS. A new reaction control system using non-toxic storable propellants is well under development with teammate Aerojet. A modern thermal protection system, or TPS, is being designed, taking advantage of the experience of teammates at NASA LARC and Boeing on the Space Shuttle and X-37 programs. Additional wind tunnel and computational fluid dynamics work has been performed on the Dream Chaser design to fine-tune the airfoils and control surfaces and fill in the gaps in the original HL-20 database. Designed for high reusability, this vehicle reduces overall cost, providing quick turnaround between missions. 
The ability to lift off on top of multiple launch vehicles and land at a wide variety of runways makes Dream Chaser a flexible option for reliable transportation. Comparing to SpaceX Dragon, the best spacecraft now, Dream Chaser can land horizontally on a runway like a traditional airplane, which makes it easier to recover and refurbish for reuse. It has a higher lift-to-drag ratio, which means it can glide back to Earth from space more efficiently than Dragon, which has a more ballistic re-entry. This feature makes it more cost-effective and environmentally friendly as it reduces the amount of fuel needed for landing. As of right now, the first Dream Chaser mission with Tenacity is still scheduled for the third quarter of this year. The first Dream Chaser, Tenacity, is nearing completion and will subsequently ship to NASA's Neil A. Armstrong Test Facility in Cleveland, Ohio. That for final space environmental testing ahead of its first mission to the ISS. That launch will be the first in a series of cargo missions to the ISS under a NASA Commercial Resupply Services II contract that was awarded back in 2016. With the help of the Shooting Star Service Module, Dream Chaser can deliver up to 5,500 kilograms of pressurized and unpressurized cargo to the space station, including food, water, supplies, and science experiments, and returns to Earth. Dream Chaser can return critical cargo at less than 1.5 grams using a gentle runway landing. Sierra Space is looking beyond cargo missions and is starting work on a crewed version of Dream Chaser that could launch as soon as 2026. I got to thinking about it and said, you know, it's almost better to do cargo first, recalled Lindsay, the Sierra Senior Vice President who oversees Dream Chaser development. Because the commonality between the cargo and crewed version will have a flight-proven vehicle before the crewed variant carries humans. From a risk standpoint, that makes me feel a lot better, actually. Sierra plans to build a fleet between 10 and 15 Dream Chasers by 2030, although the breakdown between cargo and crew variants is still to be determined. Along with the six cargo flights for NASA, plans call for cargo and crew Dream Chasers to ferry supplies and passengers to the Orbital Reef Space Station that Sierra and Blue Origin plan to erect in low Earth orbit by 2027. But first, the Dream Chaser cargo design has to reach space. As of earlier last year, the company was conducting load testing with tenacity at the company's Louisville, Colorado facility. Engineers attach the space plane to scaffolding and pistons on either side applies forces to simulate the load that Dream Chaser would experience during different phases of flight. We'll be a heck of a lot faster building and testing subsequent planes, he said. And that won't be the only difference. Lindsay expects Tenacity to be the heaviest vehicle we fly, similar to how the Space Shuttle Columbia had more mass than subsequent orbiters. Before a vehicle flies for the first time, you often have to add mass to deal with unknowns in terms of loads and vibrations, or you add mass to deal with the uncertainties in the analysis. Sierra's engineers could apply these and other lessons from tenacity to the Dream Chaser crewed variant, he says, which may someday fly NASA astronauts after all. And that about wraps it up for today's episode. Don't forget, share your ideas in the comment section below. Your support motivates us to create more quality video. And for that, we thank you so much and hope to see you next time.